A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 35, modifying commercial blowdown valves to fit this application. On a simplex there are two blowdown valves, one at each side, and these are used after a run to blow down the boiler and get rid of any lime scale or rubbish in the water. And these are blowdown valves. The two on the left are the ones that were originally fitted to the simplex boiler, the old one that is, and the two on the right are brand new ones. The brand new ones are too long. If I fit these to the boiler, then they're going to foul the connecting rods. I'm using the other end of a digital caliper to calculate the distance that I need from the boiler to the connecting rod. The blowdown valves in the left hand side of this picture have been crudely modified. Just by sawing off the squared part on the shaft. These fit, but I can't live with them like this. I'm going to modify them in a different manner. I'm going to put the parts in the lathe and shorten the body of the valve first. Then I'm going to mill both of the shafts to be the same. In this close-up you can see the saw marks and that's no good at all. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly, so the first thing to do is unscrew the shaft. The shaft won't come out of the fitting this way because the end of it that forms the valve will not come out of the hole because it's bigger. Over now to the lathe and the parts in the three-jaw chuck. All I'm doing is very carefully machining the body of the valve away, not the shaft. There's a gap between the body and the shaft, so it's quite easy to do. The brass with the square bit on the end isn't running particularly true, but it doesn't matter. Once I'd finished turning the body, I screwed the valve into the body, because for this job, the shaft needs to be tight. It's fitted into my rotary table, as you can see here, all I need to do now is rotate the rotary table from 0 to 90 to 180 to 240 to remachine a nice square on the end of the bar. You will notice that I'm using an end mill for this, not a slot drill. Using a slot drill would be a bit aggressive for such a small shaft. And oh no, look at this, I'm using an ordinary chuck to hold the end mill. You mustn't do this. On screen at the moment is an old, very good quality chuck fitted into an R8 taper. I bought this off eBay about 10 years ago and the description said it's an old good quality chuck but it's quite stiff. I used this for a lot of years to do all my milling operations. But once I started making the videos I got so sick of the comments from armchair engineers I now have an R8 collet set. But in this case I thought I would use the chuck because it was in the milling machine from having drilled all the holes around the smoke box. This seems to be working fine. I've aligned the rotary table so I can take a pass which is perfectly level with the existing flat. As the brass centre shaft is screwed very tightly into the fitting, it's most important to make sure that I take the cuts in the direction that would tighten it further. Cutting in the other direction would probably loosen the shaft and that would be disastrous. Besides, as a general rule when milling, always cut in the direction of the rotation, never away from it. Even if you're milling a strong piece of something like a steel bar, you must always cut in the direction of the cutter. If you cut in the opposite direction, you could have a problem if you have any backlash in the lead screw of the table. And you could even break the cutter, which is particularly dangerous. Whenever you see me doing a job like this, I'm wearing eye protection. But being hit in the face with a broken piece of milling cutter would not be good fun. In this clip, I'm shortening the top of the piece of brass. And once again, I haven't rotated the table. I'm just moving the position using the main hand wheels on the milling machine. And why did I do that? Because it's quicker. In this clip, I'm starting the clean-up of the milled end using a needle file. Even though this centre shaft inside the valve was very tight, the shaft itself could move slightly, so I ended up with some chatter marks on it. But as you can clearly see, it's very easy to remove the marks using this small needle file. That's one of the valves done. This clip shows the modified valve against a brand new one. And as you can see, it's a lot shorter. This will not foul the coupling rod. Now I need to machine the other one. I'm marking it with a scriber. But as these valves have been in use in the old boiler, the paint's very hard because it's baked on. So after making a definite mark with the needle file, I put the valve in the chuck, just like I did on the other one, and I turned down the main body. 
been very careful not to mark the centre spindle. Then exactly as before, it's now in the rotary table, which I'm not rotating. I've milled the square part and here I'm milling across the top. Hopefully both of these blowdown valves should look the same, even though you can never see them together when they're fitted to the engine as they're on the opposite sides. I may end up repainting these, but I do need to remove the old paint because it's badly marked. So this is a tub of very dirty cellulose thinners with the two original blowdown valves in it. I'll leave the valves in the thinners for about 24 hours. And that's about it for now. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.